Hey y'all, Redneck Reads Reddit, doing r slash entitled parents. Some of these are good. Um, yeah. I read these, I just normally just hit the titles and just read whatever I found. This one right here caught my eye, and I'll be honest, I've read this one first. Sorry. But... I wanted to share it with y'all. Now, after this one, there'll be boom, boom, you know, a couple of them, and it will be my, you know, my reaction to begin with. This one right here just kind of had me doing face palming, and, uh, I'm sorry, but... All right, this one right here is called My Daughter is an Entitled Parent by NT Engineer. I thought I would share a bit about some of the things my daughter has said slash done over time. These are a few examples. However, I felt they would fit in here and maybe give someone a smile. A little bit of background. The great state of California decided in their infinite wisdom to grant custody of my daughter to her mother, who had just gotten out of drug rehab, had no job, just moved back in with her mom, and was pregnant with someone else's kid. Instead of me, who had my own apartment, full-time jobs, benefits, no drug or alcohol issues, etc. My ex taught my daughter, through example, and specifically how to get as much from other people as possible without having to work at all. <clears throat> example number one. Until recently, I kept a cell phone for my daughter on my plan to help her a bit and to ensure I could always call her when I needed to. This exchange takes place over text. Entitled daughter, hey dad, I just tried to text this number to donate money to whatever natural disaster had happened, but it won't let me. It tells me I need premium. It tells me that premium SMS is blocked. Me, that's right. I don't want those things ending up on my bill. If you want to donate, there is an address you can send your money. Title daughter, but I just want to text my donation to help those people out. Me, but if you texted them the donation, I would pay paying the bill, not you. So you won't be donating anything, I would be. No, this is entitled daughter, no, because I would be the one texting, so I would be the one donating. It doesn't matter who would be paying the bill, please. It would make me feel so much better about myself that I'm helping them out. <clears throat> me, how do you not understand this? For you to help them out, you need to send them money. If you text them, I'm sending them money. Not you. You don't get to feel better on my dime. You're being selfish. Example two, entitled daughter calls me. Hey dad, I was wondering if you could send me some money. My kids are really hungry and I have no money and my wig slash food stamps are all gone and welfare doesn't arrive for another week. Hey, I might be able to do that, but if you don't have any money, how is it that you and your boyfriend are always posting pictures of you guys partying and getting high? Well, we don't pay for our drugs or alcohol. Me, hey, yeah, wow, that's a really good deal. Who gives you drugs and alcohol for free? Tyler daughter, no, what we do is go collect cans and turn them in for money. Then we use that money for the pot and drinks. Why don't you use that money to buy food for your kids? Because then we wouldn't have money for alcohol or pot. Okay, so Dad's like, I think you really need to think what you just said to me. This is the one where I just went, oh my God. Um, you're saying that alcohol and pot are more important than feeding your children. No, that's what I'm saying. You just aren't understanding. Never mind. Okay. Example number three. Entitled Alder. So we got approved for sexual Section 8 housing. There's just one problem. They won't allow us to have pets, so I don't know what we're going to do with Daisy, the dog. Me? Well, I guess you'll need to find a new home for her. It's just unfair. I don't understand why we can't have pets. 
Dad's saying, well, pets aren't required to live. You're essentially holding your hand out to the taxpayers saying, I need help with housing because I can't afford to pay for it. But then, say, but then saying, oh, by the way, can you pay for my dog too? It doesn't work that way. She goes, that makes no sense. If they're going to pay money to my landlord to help me pay rent, they shouldn't care if I have a dog. That's back to, if you can't afford the housing, you shouldn't have a dog. Why do you think it's okay to have a dog, but then ask other people for money to pay for all your other things, including feeding your dog? I'm not asking them for money to feed my dog. And then Dad's like, then where do you get the money to buy dog food? And she's like, I use my welfare money. He says, I hope you enjoyed these. These obviously aren't word for word, but are pretty close. If you enjoyed these, let me know, and I can share more. I have a lot more. Dude. NT Engineer. Please. Please share more. Oh, my God. Yeah. That kid's a real winner. Alrighty. Here we go. Click. Entitled mother accuses me of teaching her daughter gang signs. Uh, by Call Us Meg. This story took place in another language and is thus translated. Phrases might differ from what was spoken, but the meaning is the same. Sorry for weird formatting. I'm on mobile and don't know how to change it. Cast. E.M. is entitled mother slash my fifth grade teacher. Me, majestic elephant. M. E.M. my entitled mother. And daughter. Daughter of E.M. When I was in the fifth grade, I had an entitled teacher. Madame Lola. She was stuck up and had the haircut and always more bright red lipstick that somehow got stuck in her teeth. She was in her early 40s. She was my home language teacher. She was very strict and yelled at you when you did something wrong in her eyes, even though we were just curious 11-year-olds. She had a daughter, May, in the same class due to surname seat arrangements. The two of us ended up sitting next to each other. Madame Lola, however, treated her daughter like a princess, saying, if only the rest of you were disciplined as May. Anyway, when I turned 11, my uncle was in an accident and ended up going deaf. My mother thought it was best if I started learning sign language with the rest of the family. After a few languages, I had the alphabet memorized. I was excited to show my friends at school. While in Madame Lola's class, I ran up to May and began teaching her how to spell her name in American Sign Language. And the basics such as hello, goodbye, and thank you. I wasn't aware Madame Lola had kept a close eye on us until a hand slammed on my desk. What do you think you're doing? She demanded, narrowing her beady eyes. I was absolutely confused. I stared up at her in raging, absolutely raging aura, she admitted, scared the socks off of me. Madame, I, I was just teaching her daughter some sign. I didn't think. The word threw her off. Apparently, she didn't know people used this used shortened word for sign language. Sign? She sputtered. No, you will not teach my daughters those those revolting gang signs. She she doesn't need you to, to influence her like that. She does not need to be a part of your gangery. Gangery, that's an awesome word. I was a rough looking kid with short hair and scratches on my face from playing outside and climbing trees. All of her screaming and crap led to me crying. She told me to move to the other side of the room and never talk to her daughter again because she was too good for people like me. I went home and told my mother everything. Some of you may already know, but my mother is also an entitled parent, and boy, was she furious to know her, t her child be called a gangster by their teacher. She scheduled a meeting with my teacher, dragged me along with her, and just destroyed Madame Lola. Called her stupid and ignorant for not knowing that I meant sign language, and she thought that I, an 11-year-old who comes from a decent family, could do anything like that. In the end, my mother went to the prison principal, and Madame Lola had to write a formal letter of apology. She could never properly look me in the eye again after that incident. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. If only you could be as, you know, disciplined as my daughter. 
because my daughter is perfect. Uh huh. Nobody's kid's perfect. All right, let's see here. <laughs> okay. We're going to hit this one and see what we get. Um, All the Crazy Moms Shop at Target by Vault Girl 20. So this happened this morning. My eyes are still rolling. Just for some backstory, my Target is attached to the local mall. There is a Starbucks in the Target right between the street exit and the mall exit. I was in the middle of shopping and wanted some coffee. I had my reusable cup, my lid, my straw in my purse. I ordered my Trenta iced coffee with four pumps of hazelnut and 2%. It's a pretty simple order that they never get it wrong. This time, they got it wrong. I got vanilla instead of hazelnut. No biggie. I hate vanilla, so I asked them to remake it. The barista is super nice and felt bad, though it was a simple mistake. I went to hand her my cup, and this magic carp of a person grabs it from me. I didn't even really see her. You know, you know when you recognize there's another person next to you, but you don't look at them or even register he, he she or they I was totally confused she was her mom late 30s maybe with a bored looking preteen girl if you don't want it my daughter will drink it she has a stupidly smug look on her face no she won't give me my darn cup back don't cuss at me don't steal my crap I have no filters for magic carbs tried to make, take it back from her and some of the coffee spilled on my jeans no big deal I hand it to the barista and the mom leaves I assume that was the end when I got my cup back with the right coffee in it, I threw in a little extra tip of the drama and went to walk away. The entitled mom is back with her embarrassed kid and the Target asset protection. This is the brat right here. She points at me and steps forward, almost shouting. The Target asset protection. Ma'am, you need to step back so we can discuss this. I'm looking at them like a cow looks at an oncoming train because... WTF? She told them I stole her daughter's cup and coffee. She even started crying that I called her names and threatened her and that she knew what car, saying that I knew what car she drove. She was bawling by the time one of the guys took her away to, from Starbucks, pointed at my coffee stained leg, claiming it was proof. One of the guys started to question me as three passersby pulled out their dang phones. I said, this is my cup. I came in from the mall with it. I'm on camera. I'm also on camera where she ripped the coffee from my hands and tried to tell me I had to give it to her daughter. When I took it back, it spilled on me. Go check your cameras before anything else, please. Please, I'll wait. She started screaming that I was a liar and I needed to go to jail, but now I'm a delinquent because of my tattoos. It's an alligator on my arm. I got a freak. Oh, let's see, can I get that one? Yeah, yeah I don't know if y'all can see that one. And there's my dragon. Alligator's cool. I rolled my eyes so hard I saw the fracking future. Me, you're not a good person and you're not setting a good example for your child. You're embarrassing yourself, so shut up. Not mature, but oh well. After the baristas and asset protection confirmed my story, management let me go and apologized. I don't know what happened to Magikarp, but she's still probably flopping around in the parking lot. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, this is good. They don't hang out at Target. They hang out at Starbucks. The only time I went to Starbucks, I walked in and two moms were fighting about a blog post. Oh. <laughs> oh. Titled parents, all the crazy moms shop at Target. All right, y'all, we're gonna do one more here um, and see what we get. It's your fault. I threw my not able to swim child in a 26 foot deep pool when no one was looking. By Ixy Things. Backstory, I used to be a swimming teacher. I got the job very young by accident because I've always been in the sport type. Next to my house, there's a very famous Olympic pool in which they teach swimming and train Olympic swimmers from a very young age. So I went there with no expectations at all. 
and next thing I was working at 15. Then to say I was the youngest there, and if it wasn't for the shirt that literally said I was a trainer, no one would no uh, no one would have ever noticed me there. My job is to take care and teach babies how to swim. From age from age three to five, about 20 kids per class. From from Tuesday to Friday, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So the kids and the parents knew who I was. The class is over. And the rules about the pools, which include uh, the when the class was over, and the rules about the pool, which include two, two very important things that remind the kids every single day. Do not go near the pool if your teacher isn't around. Do not go in the pool if you don't have a floppy. I really don't know what they're called. They're, we just called it that way for years for some reason. But it was those pool noodles that were old, old enough to be to be bent and we tied them around the children's chest. Basically worked as a lifesaver. Also, you need to know we have three pools, each deeper than the others. My class took place in the medium deep. One where the kids aren't allowed and the other pool that was one where they had where they had class. The parents also knew this. The story. As as a baby's teacher, or actually any kid below twelve years old teacher, we weren't allowed to leave the kids alone or sending them away if their parents weren't there. This resulted in us waiting an extra 15 to 20 minutes for parents after our ship was done, which really wasn't that bad. When we had to wait more than, than that, the parents had already called and we just changed their clothes, the kids' clothes, and waited with the kid outside. In this story, that was not the case. I still had a four-year-old boy under my care 40 minutes past my ship. We were both wet, cold, and tired because we couldn't sit anywhere. I ended up wrapping the boy in a towel another parent gave me because the kid was trembling so much. I actually held the boys in my arms when he couldn't bear anymore. I swear that kid was about to faint from the cold and was already many, mentally preparing my first aid skills and a no shame barrier to run to the nearest hospital in my swimsuit. 50 minutes, an hour. It was getting darker and the cold air began to strike us. Finally, the mother appears. She doesn't even look at her child. She doesn't even look at me. She says, let's go, and starts to walk away as I'm holding his, his barely alive son in my arms. Not even looking back to see if he's following. I had to take the towel away since it wasn't his, and I clearly didn't trust his mother. I planned to return it myself the next day. I put the kid, put the kid down and said goodbye and watched him turn around right, and rush to the lockers because now I was freezing cold. I was furious. I couldn't dare say anything. I guess the mother had told my bosses maybe she had an emergency of some sort and was still sorting it through the phone. I got to the locker, fully changed into clothes that weren't pool light, went from swimsuit and crocs to jeans, hoodie, socks, and converse, chilled in the locker room for another 20 minutes browsing WhatsApp groups, packed my stuff in my backpack, and walked outside. Closed behind me since I was obviously the last one. At this point, it's around 7.20 p.m. There was barely any sunlight. And it was time for the Olympic trainers, Olympic swimmers to train. They really don't care for anything that's happening around them, so I just start walking my way out of the pool area, ignoring almost everything around me. For clarification, the pool area is for swimmers, teachers, and trainers only. No parents or unsupervised children. That also means if they don't have class, they can't be there allowed. It is close, it is close to the public, and the only way you can watch what's going on inside is by walking away from the buildings going up some faraway stairs to get to the seats area, where parents normally wait and watch the swimming class. The closest you can get to this pool, pool in this area is by reaching a sort of balcony with metal barriers, and then they are still about 8 meters higher than the actual ground level where the pool is. Okay. I heard screams. It's hard to notice that at first because there's so much noise around between the water, chit-chats, and trainers screaming. The scrims got louder, and I'm awkwardly passing by the deepest pool there is. I noticed the same mother from four kneeling in front of the water, holding her cell phone on one hand and kind of flopping her other hand to the water. Mother gaze, and I immediately drop my backpack and dive in the pool. Her kid is almost ten feet down into the water. This boy ha didn't drown because of me. People were screaming because they noticed this from the seats area, and someone had re my bo uh, boss's office, and they had called the pool paramedic. Other people were still trying to get someone's attention so they could help. My three bosses, one of my co-workers, another trainer, and the paramedic showed up at the exact moment I'm getting this boy out of the pool and starting CPR to get the water out of his lungs. 
The mother just awkwardly stands there and lurks to the back of everything in silence and stands there. The kid is okay. They're wrapping him in towels, telling him everything's okay. People are still wondering what happened and asking around. Taking a moment to process everything, I notice the mom in the back staring at her phone. I snap. Cue the drama. The dialogue isn't exactly isn't exactly like this since it happened three years ago, but I still remember some of it. Me, totally drenched in water, totally angry teenager. EM's entitled mother. Me, what the frack? Why was your not able to swim son in the deepest pool we have unsupervised? Entitled mother, he was not unsupervised. I was watching him. He almost drowned. She goes, well, yeah, that's not my fault. I paid the school to teach him how to swim, and I just wanted to record him swimming to show his daddy. He does it very well. Do you want to see? I stare blankly. She then shows me her phone. The actual recording of her telling her son to go in the water and show daddy how you look like a fish in the water. The boy repeating the exact words I told them every day about not going into the water without a floppy or a trainer nearby. The entitled mother telling him it's okay because she is there boy is saying scared and the mother literally pushes this kid recording him struggle for a while awing about how he is hardly able to float around for some minutes then when he gets tired of moving his little arms and legs around to keep his head above water just trying to get the edge his mother pushes him away and he immediately sinks still the video lasts about another 20 more seconds where the mother is filming the kid sinking but saying stuff like look at me daddy just like a little shark tell the mother I noticed he wasn't coming up, so I tried to grab his hand, but he was way down. Thank God you appeared at the right time. Me, dead silence. I should probably start swimming classes, too, since I don't know how to swim. Do you know a good school? Death stare. At this point, I'm done with this woman. Do you even care about your son? This is the second time he's almost died under your supervision. When you showed up an hour late after class was over, you didn't even apologize to me, nor explain why you're late. I really appreciate if his dad came from him after class because I swear I will never let this child go home with you. Pause to breath, to breathe. I realize something. Why did you even push him in the water? He's four. You know he doesn't swim nor float. Or at least you've known if you'd had a minimum interest in his life. What the frack? What the frack? Tell him, mother, what do you mean? You're way too young to talk to me like that, you little brat. My son is my problem, not yours. I don't owe you anything, and you don't have the right or power to prevent me from doing ever what I want with my son. And I couldn't jump in because I'd get my clothes to wet and i have to drive home. I also had my cell phone in my hands. Me, visibly soaked in water from head to toes in the clothes I'm supposed to walk home in, mutters a frack you and walks away. I don't know what happened next to the EM. I approached the kid again to say goodbye to check if he's all right. And I was grabbed by my backpack. My boss jumped in and grabbed my backpack. My, job, my boss jumped in to take care of the situation. I started my 15-minute long walk back to my house. Although, I'm, although by the time I got home, I'm sure most of the water had evaporated due to the way I was fuming. My boss filled me in the next day and said the mother was actually at the seat area by the time the class was over. And she got distracted with her phone and it took the whole hour for notice the class was over. She had to pick up her kid. That's why she complained that I had screamed at her after finding out I was actually... Screamed to her. And after finding out I was the actual swimming teacher, she demanded I got fired. I was not. I actually got a raise. Good for you. She threatened to sue the school because they had babies taking care of babies. And we were co confronted with the rule book about about her breaking the rules. Now she'd be in trouble. Not sure how the law applies to that in my country. For being in the pool area out of hours. And nearly drowning her own son. She immediately erased the video. Said we had no proof. And screamed some more at my boss. And walked away dragging her son. The, the kid never showed up to class again. Years later I'm still salty about the whole situation. Co-workers told me there's more to the story because the bosses refused to say anything about what happened next to the mother. I did get a warning for how I talked to parents, but it was kind of, just don't scream what the frack at them. And it wasn't, I wasn't in any real, you know, problem since I didn't have my uniform on. So in the eyes of witnesses, I was just a kid swearing at an entitled woman. Edit. Lifeguard pointed out that I could have, 
that I could have not had performed CPR, and there's right. I didn't perform CPR, but I wanted to clarify in the post that I'm not a native English speaker and my lack of knowledge of the correct term for what I did. I just wrote CPR so people could understand and assume what happened more easily. But just in case anyone ever fears this, say a person who's drowned, they probably have water in their lungs, do not c perform CPR. First check if they're breathing. Yep. Well, Ixy things. At the age of 15, you saved a kid's life. That is a selfless and sometimes thankless thing. You didn't get no thanks from that mama because she's a damn idiot. But, you know what? You're going to get a thanks from this random Yahoo in Alabama for what you did. Thank you for being a good person. Alright, y'all. If y'all like what I'm doing, you like the way I read these, like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified every time I upload one of these. And yeah, hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to carry on. Bounce off of here. Take care of a couple of things. Pop back. Record one more to be uploaded. If you're watching this today. It may be tomorrow. Or if you're watching this tomorrow. It's today. Yeah. Alright y'all. I have no earthly idea. But we'll get there. Yep. Threw a kid in the pool. And your ass couldn't swim. Dumbass.